691 hours. Welcome back to Sling Caper. There's the uh, two masterminds sitting back there. What a week it's been. Um, I hate to get too boring with more cowing talk, but really that's everything I've been doing at this point. Let's have a look. So I've been making this cowling fit down here. I did discuss last time that it was too short down the side, so I've fixed that up. It's just got a little bit of filler just to tidy it up a little bit there. Um, and that would have solved that little problem. Um, that was annoying enough, but the real sort of mission here is the knacker duct, which goes back to the intercooler. And the more I look at it, the less I like it. So firstly, the intercooler has been sitting here its whole life anyway, so I won't go too much into that. But the fact that this is supposed to now come out and it never really fit the cowling properly, that's the bit that's annoying me. So here it is sitting on its end here and what I've been doing, because there was big gaps all the way down here, I've built it up with flocks, so it's um, mainly fiberglass, just got a little bit of filler in a couple of spots just to tidy it up, make it smooth, I've still got to complete that bit. So that's quite a thick, you can see on the end there, it's quite a thick meaty piece of fiberglass now which meant that I can actually reduce the size of this and it's still just as strong. I've moved the flange on the end here which had the camlock fastener to this end piece. I've still got to tidy it up a little bit around here. But rather than having a separate hole in here to hold it in, I've moved the flange up so the mounting hole for the top cowl also covers the knacker in it. That'll just save me one camlock. And to be honest, I can't really see much difference from it being there or there. So that's doing the same thing. And this bit along here I'm going to have to do work on here, that's just some filler, I've got to just take that off and then I'm going to add fibreglass in there so I can round it more because the knacker in lets work better if this is actually more of an airfoil section rather than blunt. So I'll fix that up. If we look on the back of it, here's the big news. I've cut an awful amount off in here and the reason why is because when this is closed, if I just hold that shut, it's extremely close to this um, valve cover but it also interferes with the intake you can see it been rubbing on there and it's also been interfering with this um, valve hose and even though it had cutouts one of them there for the valve at the top and one on the bottom for the air inlet it wasn't enough so I'm completely reshaping it I've cut along here and pushed it in and I'm making it sort of one smooth round piece out so it'll just smoothly extend its way out rather than having notches and cuts in it um, and rather than it being fat and, and staying that way so it should slow the airflow down and increase the pressure as it gets down to the back and it should be relatively smooth by the way I'm sort of doing it so that should hopefully work out just a lot of extra work that I'd rather not have to do. So we were unfortunate enough to be tied up with the counterfeit um, continental fuel hose, so we're having to redo that. So one of the things is this jetted T-piece that was sitting in here, um, and that's the jet there, and it's just been threaded into the T-piece here with a quarter 28 thread, so that's pretty easy to deal with. So what I've done in place of that, we, I intend on going through to uh, Teflon lines. We can get all the parts locally, but I just have to make the jetted T-piece. So this is what I did for it. Standard AN6T is um, one part of the, the equation. And then the second bit is a, I've just put some tape around it so I don't lose it. But it's a reducer to go from AN6 to AN4. And what I did was drill from in behind and tap it quarter 28. I just didn't run the drill all the way through so it'll still seat properly with AN4. And then that, T-piece which came out of here, I just happened to have two, I don't know why, um, that can screw in from behind and because the diameter of that fits neatly inside PN6, there's no problem with that, so that can just um, screw on the end and that, that'll cover me for the jetted T-piece, so uh, it was actually quite easy in the end, just took a little bit of scratching the head. So again, don't really want to bore everyone with cowling talk and the like, but unfortunately, like I say, it's all I've been doing because there's been so much in order to correct it and do all the right things. Um, it's been an interesting week, actually. Had some interesting people come through. Had 
um, well, several people that are interested in building slings and various other sorts of aeroplanes. So it's been a good exercise for us to be able to be honest with them and so they can get some facts, or at least from our perspective. And um, when I wasn't here, Glenn picked up a couple of the same. So yeah, it's been interesting. That sort of generally don't get a lot of people through, but uh, we have actually had quite a few people just of late. So obviously um, we're, we're getting a little bit more known with, with local people who are interested in, in building Glenn and Harry and I also went out to the airport earlier on and you'll see us here, we're going out to look at the wings. Um, we're, just, we're just about to move them into a different hangar and that's going to be where we do all the assembly when all of this goes off to get paint and then we'll be operating from the hangar out at the airport so we just went and set all that up. But Look at the, the lights strobing on there. Gave us a good opportunity to go and have a look at the wings and also a beautiful RV-10 which was the hundredth aeroplane that um, Robin Cost Aviation was, has built for customers. Beautiful aeroplane, it was about to fly today for the first time so didn't hear how that went but I'm sure it would have been great, the quality was awesome. 695 and the place looks like a bomb hit it but we're getting there. Cal, I've put the, well, the vent in on the top so I've used the standard rivets for that and I have used a bit of epoxy underneath it although I suspect with the heat from the engine that will be a bit of a wasted effort but anyway it's on there. Definitely making progress with that, that's just sitting out of the way. Uh, still a little bit of material to put on here and down here and uh, also just got to tidy up around the front here and needs a little bit more and just a little bit of filler here and there to tidy it up. One thing I noticed with the new cowl also is with the air cleaner on there, the knacker inlet that goes to the air cleaner um, didn't line up and in actual fact it was hitting the actuator here for the wastegate um, so it was sort of lining up down here so half and half and because it's only oh, I don't know 20-25 millimeters in front that it doesn't really make it easy for a, even a scat to make a nice line into there, so I've redone a few things with that too. Here's the inside of this knacker duct. I've cut a V out of here and then pushed this as flat as I can. I've had to leave enough room in here to get the scat hose and a clamp in, which is just enough, but that lines up a lot better now with the, with the air cleaner, and that should give it a nicer flow of air into the engine. Sitting up on its side like that, I've also added um, these mounts here for the oil cooler and the coolant and because they've moved this knacker inlet the standard latch interferes on here and so it's gone to a new system now where it's got this hoop and a, and a piece sticking out the side that goes under the hoop and then you just clip it up on that side. I actually quite like it, it's, it seems to be quite a good system it's also easier to start fitting these um, fairings on the inside that covers the mechanism. I've noticed that it interferes with the hooks on the back half of the mechanism um, so that's going to need a little bit of work there. I've done on the pilot side I've actually done that so this one here still needs a little bit of work so more fiberglass. Great! Things we're going to need to do is we're going to get the stabiliser and the fin back from the airport so I can fit the, the fairing just sort of basically sitting there and it's difficult to sort of really do much with it without the stabiliser and the vertical fin. One thing about it though, we'll note that as it's pressed down there, it has quite a nice fit at the front, but this bit here is quite high. Now, once the rib nuts are inserted into the skin here, that's going to give it about a millimetre gap all the way along. So that's kind of why I want to get all this back so I can get it to fit better. Um, a little bit hard to sort of see exactly how it's going to go without all the bits, but um, I suspect there's going to be quite a bit more fiberglass work to avoid all these horrible gaps. It's 6.95 hours, raining outside. I'm just going to make this a short video because it's a bit dull, just more cow work. Um, nothing too exciting, although I must admit there's quite a bit of fiberglass work to do, so we'll see how we go for the next one. Don't really want to bore everybody with more cow. In the meantime, have a great week. Catch you next time.